The Chaser Report is recorded on Gadigal land. Striving for mediocrity in a world of excellence, this is The Chaser Report. Hello and welcome to The Chaser Report with Dom. And once again, Andrew Hansen is with us from uh, sunny or otherwise Melbourne. And Andrew, yes, hello, Dommy. Usually otherwise, yes, but you never know. Yes, you never know. It's hope springs eternal, isn't it? I, will, I mean, Queensland had a bit of snow last week, extraordinarily enough. A little bit of, just north of the border, a little mm, dusting of time. snow. I, I wish it would fall on the fake beach <laughs> in, in Brizzy. That's Because it can turn into a little fake ski resort. That's what I'd like Wouldn't to Wouldn't that be great with little, little ski jumps where you oh, end up in the, in the Brisbane River? There. I love that spot. In, in Brizzy there and it's got you can have nice food nearby and, 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 and now ski. I was there actually just a few weeks ago. I walked past that beach mm. and I was astonished, yeah. Andrew, astonished. I think it's called Streets Beach because you know, it's being, mm. being fake and it has to be <laughs> commercially sponsored. Um, it was closed. Yeah. It was completely closed. There was nothing to be done. You couldn't oh. sun yourself. This is in one of the warmest places in Australia and by, by Queensland standards it was too cold. Coming from New South Wales I thought it was a perfect day for a bit of a beach, oh, a beach experience. What a shame they close the beach. Yeah. That, that's that's a pity. But is it a dog beach? That streets beach. Can you can you take your dog? I t- it's pretty small, so I'm guessing not. Yeah. But the the amazing thing about it is that, and probably the the good thing about it actually, I'd forgotten. See, to to my mind, when I imagine it, I imagine that the water at the streets beach is river water. That it's you know it's like one of these things that you can actually take a sort of a, a swim in the river, but not at all. It's like a a, a public pool with sand. Oh, is it, oh it's chlorinated. It's, is well, it? I think it it'd have to be, wouldn't it? You've got all these toddlers weighing in it. I um, suppose it might be. Yeah, yeah it looks the like beach it is. couldn't be. Yeah, I mean, it couldn't be too natural. It could go. <laughs> Green the streets company it? would be <coughs> their reputation would be in, in trouble if there wasn't oh, chlorinated. Yeah. So no, it's completely like, artificial. Even mm. though it's next to a body of water, mm. uh, as far as I'm aware, no, none of the water passes between the two areas. And given that there's a giant freeway on the far side of the uh, the Brisbane River, mm. it's probably good. I mean, uh, Joe Bucky Peterson went. Oh, you know what? The best thing is to build alongside a riverbank. It's a giant, massive spaghetti junction of freeway. It's a really big freeway mm. on there. Just opposite the streets beach. Yeah, I think it'd be nice if some more of our beaches in Australia, some of the famous ones I feel <clears throat> should be you know privately owned and sponsored yeah. by junk food companies that's right it'd be great to have you know like why is it Bondi Beach in Sydney for example I mean that that, that could be the, the Hungry Jack's Beach the waves are better at Hungry Jack's the Beach w- <laughs> yes yes <laughs> McDonald's in favor. would would you know just do the beach down the road and they'd have a McDonald's would do a drive through beach I think that's the thing that's lacking in our beach culture <sighs> Oh, look, as a beach hater, as somebody who can't stand <laughs> Can you not? beaches, I would go the drive through beach, absolutely, because I like looking at a beach. Oh, okay. I just don't like touching a beach. I don't want to touch the beach. So, I don't want to feel the sand and the shells. Yuck. Right. Yeah. So if Seaweed we could, if we could legs. design a beach that you could drive over, yeah. you'd enjoy yeah. that? Oh, absolutely, because they're, beach, they're very pretty things, but just not to be stood on. Mm. It, it, what about a travelator? If we could have a beach like a Westfield beach. Genius, With a travelator. Yes. Oh, interesting. I'd be right into that, the Westfield beach. Beach. Yes, please take me there. Very, very good. Because you know, there's now the Penrith Beach. They call it Pondi Beach. Oh, there is too. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, How's that going for? Them? Oh, very well. I mean, I haven't been there. I'm keen to check it out. But my understanding, Andrew, is that um, when you're building a beach in Penrith, which is, I think it's I don't know, 70 kilometres or something from the from the coast. It's a long mm. drive from the coast. Standards yeah. are low for what that beach yeah. can be. So all you need to they, do they, they've never seen the sea. No, people yeah, that's in right. And yeah. this this isn't a, it's it's a lake. It's the Penrith Lakes. Mm. They managed to put a, a car park down there. I think there's like one food truck or an ice cream van and a little temporary toilet block. That's all you need to make the people of Penrith happy. Because well, it sounds like all all you need. I, mean, I feel like in here in Melbourne we could use that too you because <clears throat> we don't have a nice beach in Melbourne. We don't really have it. I mean, we have what we call beaches, but mm. they're really just kind of strips of of pebbles with um industrial effluent washing <laughs> yeah. up against them. Yeah, I mean, so I, I would quite like the Penrith Beach to be built here too. In, you in could, Melbourne. you could. Well, look, the St Kilda Beach. Last time I went there, it was it was a bit like a pastiche of a beach. It was you go there to watch rock gigs, don't you? Isn't that what St Kilda's for, or to shoot up? The, either one or yeah, both, but not both, the beach. Yes. The beach is just sort of there. Yeah. Um, no, exactly. I saw I saw the Wiggles there at course, the Palais. Of course, and, uh, that, yeah, that was a great gig to shoot up at. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, but no, thinking of beaches in, I mean, on the river, why hasn't the Yarra uh, seen fit? You, you wouldn't have streets sponsoring the Yarra Beach, would you? It'd have to be some sort of artist or connoisseur gelato uh, Yarra Beach, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, that's right. Yeah, or a coffee. Yes. You know, you, we'd have sort of a you know, St. Ali Saint coffee Ali, you roasted You would have St. Ali. Yes, absolutely you would. <laughs> what a great idea. I think that'll probably happen at some point. I mean, or the casino. I mean, are they still allowed to mm. burn all that gas? You know, those giant 
burbling gas things outside with the flames. The only place you can get warm in Melbourne in winter is under those giant... Have they been yeah, cancelled from, yeah, from using that, that, natural that, that, gas now? No, of course, of course not, Dommy. It's the casino. Oh, you right. know, Crown, cause Crown Casino are allowed to do anything. So they could no have a beach, what they do. couldn't they? They can do whatever they with want. With pokies. They could, we could have the Crown Beach. Yeah. I'm, I'm amazed they haven't already built an offensively huge vertical beach <laughs> yeah, in the middle of true. Melbourne. <laughs> but it, would be, it would have to be vertical if it was Crown. Yeah. Imagine the, they'd, they'd cordon off a bunch of the Yarra and then they'd not only would they have pokies on the sand and, and roulette tables, they'd have the world largest lifeguard tower that was also a hotel and on top you'd have the lifeguards just monitoring yeah. the beach below from hundreds of meters in the air it'd be fantastic and with, with poker machines all the way along the beach absolutely absolutely it'd be, it'd be fantastic it'd be popular and they'd get gourmet chefs wouldn't they to come and run the little ice cream concessions oh, and the, that, that's the barbecue right. yes 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 they'd have uh they'd, they'd have a branch of, of nobu or something they would they would opening up <clears throat> i imagine yeah yeah. Now, thinking more about Brisbane, I mean, I'm quite fond of Brisbane these days. I generally have a good time there. But I wonder if, given the success of Streets Beach, it's time to bulldoze Brisbane entirely and mm. just have it as some sort of sponsored beach. I mean... Mm. The, the whole place. The whole, the whole thing. No, Queen the whole Street thing, Mall, you, you're speaking a great deal of sense. You don't really don't need it. And that, that was what Joe tried to do, but the sort of heritage people got in. You can even leave a little bit of the heritage stuff, but much of Brisbane you could total and start again. And, and what better to do than having a job? Giant beach. That's what they yeah, did on the Gold like, Coast, yeah, isn't it? Could, it? They made all those fake Australia's lakes. could be Australia's beach. You know, it could just be the nation's giant beach, yeah. couldn't it? <clears throat> we could all go to the streets beach. It was just this enormous thing that takes up most of Queensland. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was, I was in the lovely. Gold Coast and I, I'd forgotten that not only did they ruin the, the actually quite beautiful Gold Coast beaches with all those giant condos, but on the other side, they've got all these fake rivers and lakes. And I mean, I think the original rivers were real, but like they've turned it into this giant kind of completely artificial series of water views and lagoons mm. and things, you know, mermaid waters and broad beach waters and all that. So they could do that with oh, Brisbane. Yeah. They know how to do that. Yeah, I, I mean, I quite like it. I, I, I like driving around that area and trying to guess you know which which bit of water was naturally there <laughs> yeah, and none and which one was you know built just to make christopher scase happy yes or, or something absolutely but look this brings us to uh the the vaguely news related part of the podcast which is the paris olympics and the new sports coming in which we'll get into after this the chaser report news you know you can't trust and Andrew, of course, the two things are linked together because um, Brisbane has time, don't they? When their Olympics is in 2032, they could bulldoze. Yeah. If they start planning the events they want at the Brisbane Olympics, they could mm. take a leaf out of what's coming to Paris and design Brisbane as a playground for their own games. Well, I think if the place has been bulldozed and turned into a beach, it would be the perfect perfect Olympic city. Yeah, really. beach volleyball. Nice, nice and flat, a lot of beach volleyball. Yeah, absolutely. You, you could have sandcastle building as an event at the Olympics. I can see this. Yeah. I, I'm looking forward to the Brisbane the Brizzy Olympics. Oh, it's going to be fabulous. And, and I mean, Paris is getting on the way. They're, they're bringing in breakdancing or breaking. As it's called, I I would if you said I want to watch an event of breaking, I would think it was some sort of you know violent rugby league type thing. But no, it's what we're calling break dancing now. It's not dancing, Andrew. It's breaking now. It's called breaking. Mm. Gosh, I'm I'm so behind, Tommy. I'm really behind. I mean, when you mention break dancing, all I remember is school teachers who used to get so angry about it when when <laughs> yeah. we were in school. Yes. It was it was at the assembly every single week. It was a huge talking point that the. They'd come out and ban breakdancing. And then the week after that, they'd ban it again. Because <laughs> they had to, because when every time they banned it, they made it more popular. Can't you just yes. imagine in some sort of an 80s rap video, the principal going up there and going, oh, no more breakdancing. And the kids just, you know, <laughs> busting a move on the stage back then. In response, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, is that what you say, principal? Well, yeah. get a load of this. Take this, yeah, and they're down. me spinning on my back or whatever it is, or doing mm. a headstand. Yeah, that's there. Uh, breaking, as opposed to, to Breaking Bad, which is more of a Gold Coast event, the Meth Lab. Mm. Uh, oh, there you go. That yes. would be a very good event for the Gold Coast at the mm. Brisbane Olympics. Um, Kayak Cross is coming to the Paris Olympics. At last. <laughs> Finally, the people have been listened to. For too long, Kayak Cross has been overlooked as an Olympic sport. It seems so obvious that if, or at least if anybody knew what Kayak Cross was, we, we would all be demanding that it be in the Olympics. That's right, because they've had a kayaking for a while. They've had canoeing and kayaking for a while. Oh, for a long time, so, since I was a kid. So what yeah. do you think Kayak Cross is crossed with? Yeah, oh, is that is that a cross between kayaking and some other sport, is it? I'm wondering what you think it, what you think it is. I'm just oh, trying to Oh, maybe, is, is, is it tennis? Is it tennis? So you stand in the kayak with a, with a racket and <laughs> yes, would that be great? And whack balls, or, or perhaps with shooting the river. They combine or maybe it with shooting, the shooting and shoot the rifles. other kayakers out of their kayaks. Yeah. Um, it could be that. Oh, we could careful what you say about 
shooting. Oh, people that's true. We, we don't want he get... might be deported like Tenacious D. You don't want that. No, it's this is very strange. It's um. So what they do is it's apparently more dramatic than than kayak and canoe slalom. So you go through an aquatic ob- obstacle course of up and downstream gates. That's a bit like the original. But mm. you get launched off a ramp into the water. So you go two metres into the water and contact is allowed. You can oh. you can use your paddles to stop the competitors. So it's kind of like dodging cars. And you've got to compete one Eskimo roll before crossing the finish line, which means you've got to do a three a full 360 degree flip and land fully upright during the event. The, the, I don't think they've thought this through properly. From what you've just described to me, Domi, this is a very chaotic game. Yes. It sounds like it was very haphazardly thrown together and at the last minute somebody said, wait a minute, this is the, we've come up with a pretty good game, but it's just not maybe interesting <laughs> enough. I know. Let's require them to do one <laughs> 360 degree flip before yeah. they cross the finish line as well. I mean, that, that way you could put that into any sport to improve it. Like <laughs> You could put that into football, they have to do a 360 yep. degree flip. Wouldn't that be great? In- <laughs> if every, every, every AFL game, you take a mark and you've got yeah. to do a some sort of a backflip or something. You've got to, yes, what's what's known as an Eskimo. Have they not renamed the Eskimo roll? That's a, that's a slightly r- racist oh, name, yes. isn't it? Yes, I mean... It should be called the Inuit roll. Inuit roll, yes, indeed. Oh. Yes, and, yeah. and they, I'm looking at them here. They This is Red Bull, of course, sponsor it because, of course, they do. You begin sort of on a slope above the water, so you, you get sort of dropped into it. And it just makes me think how much Craig would have enjoyed this back in the day. He was the canoer at university. In he fact, was. Craig Rewcastle, yes, very keen kaye or canoe, wasn't he? Yes. Yeah, yeah, he was. He was very, and and also very keen. He, quite a physical guy. He would have liked pushing people out of the way with the with the uh, the paddle. Well, I don't wouldn't think he? he'd still enjoy that? I think he, yeah. It, he used to play a sport called canoe polo. That's right, which is probably equally violent. That's the thing they're missing, mm. isn't it? That, that they've got the the flip and the airborne thing. They haven't they got a the ball. Three, yeah. They need to put the ball in. The ball is is perhaps what they need. Mm. At least they had the flip. Yeah. Oh boy, I'm I'm really getting into the flip now. I, I'd love to see that brought into golf <laughs> as well. I think you know just before they and chess. You know, <laughs> I think the grandmaster before he before when he's considering the checkmate, you're not allowed to checkmate somebody until you've done a three sixty <laughs> flip. Yeah, absolutely. But I, I'm imagining yes. Um, you know, in just every sport, people being allowed. To attack, attack each other with the with the equipment. I mean, that's the problem with car racing is that there's you're not allowed to dr- actually drive into the other cars enough. You're right. You're right. That would be improved if you could just attack attack with the gear, with the gear in any sport, wouldn't it? I think that's what's missing. Yes. Right, so that's that's Paris. They're bringing in the the canoe cross. Some of the recent sports are back. There's surfing's back, skateboarding's back, sport climbing apparently, which debuted in Tokyo, is uh, coming back. And I mean sport that climbing, climbing isn't something you. To me, yeah. climbing's a way of escaping from something. I wouldn't do it voluntarily. Yeah, yeah climbing it is, isn't it? It's it's just a, it's not really. A, I don't think that's a sport. It's just something that kids do for fun. You know? Yeah, I mean they may as well have monkey bars. Or is that an Olympic event? It probably now? is. Yeah, it probably is. But they've cancelled from the Tokyo Olympics. They've cancelled baseball, softball, and karate. Uh, karate they? was just brought in, I guess, as a Japanese sport, which makes me think. Finally, Andrew, what what sports could be added to Brisbane as a as a sort of local bit? Because every games gets its own little bit of local flavour, doesn't it? I can't. Mm. I think Sydney had the beach volleyball or something. Uh, what would you do in Brisbane? Would, would you would it be demolition? That would the sport would be. You'd need to knock oh, down a, a historic Queensland pub in the middle of the night. That's not a bad one, actually. A bit of that, or um, maybe sandbagging um, could be a good sport for. Oh for yes, I feel in they, the they have to do a, a lot of that there when it gets. You know they get those floods every so often and everybody I'm always really inspired actually because I've known you know some of my Brisbane friends mm. you know during one of those floods they're always out there helping yeah. by by carrying sandbags around and plonking them down everybody pitches in yes I that's what a good a nice idea sport. and I mean this is a, a serious story you know the, the, the disasters in Brisbane and the terrible things that happen in the river but of all the disasters to happen in the Brisbane river they haven't had the kayak cross during the, well, the Brisbane no, river flood this is what they've been lacking Dominic. Mm. yeah I think you're right the kayak cross would be the ultimate sport, really, to bring in there, wouldn't it? So you put that in and you, you have to flip. What I'm imagining is the, the flood water. you've got to ride the flood water from the Brisbane River, do an Eskimo flip, if we're calling it that, or an Inuit flip, and land up in the streets beach, and there you go. Gold medal. Oh, absolutely. You could be given it there. And, and inst- instead of medals, I think they should hand out stakes. In in Brizzy. Stakes and uh, a, a beautiful condo apartment uh, in the Gold Coast to all the winners. Oh, yeah, I'd be right there. I'd be right there. Andrew, lovely as ever. Thank you for uh, uh, going on this journey, really, because at the start of the podcast, I had no idea what kayak cross was. Um, but now I think it could be it could be highly entertaining. Yeah, it's it's completely 
uh, it's completely news to me. In fact, all these sports... I mean, I'm not a sporty person, mm. so <laughs> this is all, all very revealing to me. Well, I've never heard of any of these I'll sports s- before. I'll see you at Brisbane 2032 in the demolished ruins of the CBD. We'll be there CBD. cheering on our Aussie men and women. As long as they save the, the Breakfast Creek Hotel. Yes, as long as they save one classic pub, you can demolish the rest. Brisbane, go ahead. That's the green light from Andrew Hansen. Our gear is from Road. We're part of the Iconoclast Network, and we'll catch you next time.